Well, hello and good evening, everybody. It's Thursday, March 14, 2024. Welcome to the only show about Spartan Dogs, hosted by Spartan Dogs. This is Sparta MSU. I'm your host, Jason Strayhorn, along with my co-host, Cedric Spurvin Irvin. And hey, what's going on, baby? Yeah, I like the sunglasses. Hey, you know what I mean? It's getting a little hot in here. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Look, we got a jam-packed show today, everybody. We got to get to it. This is your first time watching the show. We want to welcome you to the chat. As uh, people are already in there doing their thing, we want to welcome you. And the people who are longtime listeners, we absolutely thank you for your loyalty. And do not forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Click that like and subscribe button while you're in that chat. We need that. Doesn't cost you a thing, and helps us a whole lot. And Make sure you know that this month is 20% off all this is part of MSU merchandise for orders of $50 or more. 20%, that's a lot. Just go to this is part of MSU.com to get your break and put in there merch. What is it? March? Merch Madness. Merch Madness. This is between now and the end of March because Spartans might be on a roll. You know what I mean? Look really good today. Let us know. Where you're watching us from. Said man, how's everything going in the land of swerve? Hey, Stray, I wanted to say, you know, with the merchandise, you know, since my birthday is coming up March 30th, they can already get me a shirt, or another hat, or something for the show and just send it to me. I just put my address down in the in, in the in the box. Oh, you gonna put your address in the chat? Yeah, yeah, okay. why not? I mean, you know, I, we got some great loyal fans, you know, they might well send the old boy a shirt or something so I can keep wearing on the shirt. And I'm gonna give y'all a shout out, whoever bought me a shirt for my birthday, March 30th. Ooh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little Aries love. Come on, dog. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, a little flashy, you know, they like to do their thing. You know, listen, man, I know one thing, a lot of people in Spartan Nation is happy today. You know why? Because them boys in green went out to Minneapolis and did their thing. Number eight seed MSU in men's basketball face number nine. Minnesota Golden Gophers and knocked them off 77 to 67 with targets. Say, what you think about the game? Hey, you know, it, this is no time right here. You know, I, I it, it won't shock me if we, if we upset Purdue. Mm. You know? I mean, you know, so I'm just one of those that, you know, I believe in Izzo. You know, he, he made a name for himself around this time, and and we're going to get it done. It's going to be a good fight. We're going to bleed that one. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. They're watching us in Bradenton, Florida. There you, you know, go. Buddy in the house again in, in, in uh, Hawaii. We got people all over. I see Lance in Michigan. I see Milford in the house. Milford, Michigan. Man, look, okay. Now, talking about this game today, though, Tyson Walker, A.J. Hogard, they did their thing. A.J. had a team high 17 points. I mean, he balled out. He was six for six and had six assists on the day. You Think know, the key, the key too also, Stray, we got three players that's coming off the bench that's getting over 15 minutes. Mm. You know, they gave us a, a good 15 minutes, you know, scoring some points to give us some bench points, too. That to help us to you know to get that ten point on lead. Who's a, who? Who the players you want to highlight coming off the bench? You know, y'all y'all call the whole name. You know, I, I got I call him J.K. You know, that's my dude, the X Man. You know, the X Man gave me gave me fifteen minutes. He was three for seven. You know, because I gave him a text before the game and say, hey, you got to be the X Man. You got to be the X Factor. <laughs> and he did what he had to do, and that, and, and and that's all I can ask. And you know, T Hall. I don't know what y'all call him, but I know him as T Hall. You know what I'm saying? Hall of me, I call him T Hall. That's hey, my he dog. Out. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Off the bench, 21 minutes. That's I, all you need. You, know. you think the home cooking has something to do with it? You know, he's a native of Minneapolis, right? He had to come home and get some of that mama's tater salad. You know what I mean? The you potato know? salad or collard greens will do it every time, straight with the whole malls in the collard greens. Trust me, it works every time. <laughs> <laughs> he, he came back to Minneapolis and got the collard greens. And, and don't think we didn't remember that. that we got to go back to that next week. We'll talk about that. Michigan State football did listen. And they fed them boys collard greens when you were talking about that last week. The day after we talked about it, you brought it up. They fed the whole team collard greens. I, I so, know it worked for me. 
Give me my grandma college if you want to. 200 yard, four touchdown, MVP. Spartans <laughs> <laughs> did a phenomenal job today. Had a lot of people in double digits. I mean, Holloman had a great game, and that was a guy who they allowed to put the sticker up because the team votes on that after the game. Who gets to put the, you know, the, it's a survive in advance situation right now, right? You in postseason play, and the team unanimously voted for Trey Holloman to put that. Boom, you know, sticker on the on the bracket. Now they face Purdue tomorrow at noon. Okay. Now, what do you think about that game? And we're gonna ask our next guest about this too. But what do you think about the game against Purdue with Big E? You know, it, it, Purdue right now probably overlooking Michigan State, which you shouldn't mm -hmm. because of the history. But the history ain't never won a game. So mm -hmm. why would Purdue come in respecting respecting this team, which is this team been playing inconsistent? This is why I say we're gonna sneak up and we're gonna we're gonna fight now. It's not gonna be it's not gonna be a cakewalk. Listen to what I'm saying, Spartan fan. We're gonna fight because Izzo gonna Izzo got a speech for him, you know. So I'm believing in Izzo. I'm believing in Izzo in the collard greens. <laughs> we got you, Seti Bear. I, I, listen, listen. Hey. Who who Seti Bear? No, <laughs> no, no, no. Hell no, straight. <laughs> <laughs> no, Steve, I ain't no Seti Bear. I'm saying, <laughs> yeah, no. Hey, hey, say Look at this one. This one's for you. I'm an alpha male. 1997 Penn State. You remember that one? Do I remember? Got a tattoo <laughs> on my back, baby. <laughs> I hey. always say, if I had Mark Renard carries, I rush for the most yards ever. Hey, first time, it's still a record. Only time, two running backs over 200 yards. I don't know who was blocking for Who was that center on the team? One of the dudes with the biggest heads I ever seen. Hey, one of the best centers of all time in Michigan State history. We ain't going to, we're not doing this, man. Pigeon tech, pigeon toes, bow legged, straight on. <laughs> That's what they say the athletes is pigeon toe, right? We you know. But what listen, absolutely. Killer for. Uh, uh, Harriet Dean, what you talking about? Harriet said something about some fried green tomato. See, see, okay. Harriet. Nope, see, see, nope, nope. That's not <laughs> gonna get it. That's not gonna get it. No. They're good though. We, we need, it's good, but we need some hall malls. Something gonna stick to the bone. Hall mall, collard greens, you know, Thanksgiving chitlins. We need some of that, Miss oh, Miss Dean. Come on, baby. No, 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 no. Fried green tomato. What, what are they gonna do? <laughs> they taste good. That's yeah, a, I, don't, I don't want no. You gotta appetite. start somewhere. I don't want no appetite. I want the, the hog. Give me the hog. You want the whole hog? I want you the know. hog. Speaking of the whole hog, man, we got somebody that's gonna be joining the show right now. You know, they go. Take, he doesn't really need an introduction because this is a person who was inducted into Michigan State Hall of Fame back in '96. Said that's when you got to Michigan State. He was going in the Hall of Fame when you were just wet behind the ears, coming on campus, didn't know what was going on from Miami, Florida. Named to the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame in 2006, Henry Ford High School in Detroit, you know, named the gymnasium after him in 2007. Man, you listen, the only, one and only, Special K, Greg Kelser joins the Sparta <laughs> MSU. Ooh, he still got the, the, good, the, the five heartbeats here. I see it. Hey, 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 you guys are hilarious. I got to tell you. <laughs> I'm here cracking up. Mr. K, you still got the good hair, I see, huh? Hey, hey, check this out. Hey, Cedric, I see that beautiful piano back there, man. Is that for show, or uh, can you get down? Listen, Alicia Keys ain't got nothing on me, boss. Ooh. <laughs> Wait till the last five minutes of the show. I'm going to give you everything you want. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, because I have one, I can't play a lick. <laughs> it looks good, though. Oh, What's up, man. Jason? What's going on, Greg? You did, of, you did a lot of homework, man. I'm impressed. Oh, hey, man. Hey, listen, we, we do that on this show. Hey, hold this on. Show. Let me get right here. Let me get right. <laughs> there it is. There yeah. Yes. Look, look, looking like you golf every Monday through Friday. I see. I wish. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> you on the road. I mean, listen. Great. You know, we know that you do a lot of work with the Pistons, obviously. We're going to get mm -hmm. into that. You know, you work with the Pistons and obviously working with the same guy I work with on football Saturdays for Michigan State football, George Blaha. You work with 
on them, 82 games on the road in NBA with uh, George Blaha with the Pistons. Talk about like you in your your career coming out of Henry Ford. Like so, you you were recruited by Gus Ganakis, correct? I was. Yes, I played my first year for Coach Ganakis, and I tell him I used to tell him that he would out of all the people I've met and been around uh, in my life, he is like the in the top four um, men, most important men in my life. You know, number one was my my father, my dad. Uh, who was a military man. I grew up in the military and um, moved a lot of places, saw a lot of things, uh, learned to get along with people of all walks of life, different cultures and that sort of thing. So, you know, that was just a tremendous opportunity for a young kid out of Panama City, Florida, uh, born in the 50s, late 50s. Um, And then, uh, you know, after my dad was my grandfather, you know, my grandfather on on my mother's side, just a tremendous influence in my life. And then Coach Ganakis, the man who believed in me and gave me a shot at Michigan State, coached me. I played for him one year, but didn't matter. Um, by that time, he had cemented his place in terms of relevance in my life. And then, of course, the, his predecessor, um, or, or should I mean, I'm sorry, the man who succeeded him was uh, Judd Heathcote. So the four of them had just an incredible uh, impact uh, in my life, the things, the lessons that they taught, uh, the methods of motivation I still live by those things that I learned from them to this day. And it's been a long time since I was, uh, uh, you know, a part of the judge program at Michigan State or or Coach Ganakis's. But I will never forget those men. Ain't no doubt about it. See, you remember them days back there in Michigan State? Like, so, you know, what you what, what kind of question you got for a legend right here, Mr. Special K. I'm a fan of both you guys too. Let me just say that you know I, I've watched oh. my Spartan football for six you, decades. You. Now. <laughs> yeah, six decades. I'm telling. I'm, I'm, I'm an older guy. I'm a little older than you guys. I'm not gonna ask you who who, who, the, who the best running back you ever seen because I already know the answer, Mr. K. But listen, I'm putting you on that list. That's I'm right. Sure. <laughs> you better know it. <laughs> I want to know. Was it the Converse? Like, how, how, did, how did y'all play in those Converse? I didn't play in them. You didn't? No, I couldn't. I, they were too hard on the bottom. Uh, yeah, my first year at Michigan State, I played in Puma. I, I, stayed, I played in the Walt Frazier Pumas. Okay. And then the next two years, I, I moved to Nike. Nike was sort of still young. A lot of people didn't know about Nike. Adidas was very popular. Of course, the Converse that you talked about. Uh, and then my last year, you'll love this, guys. My last year, I played in some Wilson Beta Bullets. Uh, and the reason why I was able to do that, my, my teammate, Urban oh, Jim. Well, yeah, yeah. Wilson, you know Wilson Sporting Goods and Wilson's products right now. They make everything. Bats, baseballs, golf clubs, everything. Yeah. Footballs, but, you know. So they came into town and uh, their representatives and they said, hey, uh, we'd like to get you and Urban Johnson and Ron Charles in the shoe. Um and they said, you know what? We did all the research. It's not against NCAA rules, but you can wear the shoe and we can't pay you money, but there's nothing against giving you equipment. So I'm telling you, man, we had so much Wilson stuff. It was unbelievable. So, I don't so, care. so, so, so you long started, long. y'all started the first NIL deal. Y'all was getting yeah, that's the best we could do in that's the best we could do in 1978. Those shoes were not the not the nicest looking shoes. But they work. They work for us, and, and we wore them all through the tournament, um, through the regular season, the Big Ten season, and then into the tournament. And I'll tell you what happened. When we got to the Final Four, we had, an, uh, we had a, a gentleman from one of the other companies uh, come to our room in Salt Lake City, Irvin and myself, and he spread out $4,000 each, which was a lot of money back then. Oh, man. Heck yeah. And the only thing we had to do was wear that shoe in the last two games. And Irvin and I looked at each other, and we looked at that money, and we're like, "Goodness, what are we gonna do?" Well, so I wasn't we, playing with we, the match, man. Well, let me just say this: we did the right thing. We did not wear those shoes. We wore the ones we had been wearing all year, and we won a national championship in them. Really? Did you take them down? Hey, listen, you gotta do what's right. And Wilson had been behind us the whole season, and uh, you know, we'd taken all their shoes and. And by the way, the shoes had gotten us to that point. Why would we go out of them? Why would we go away from it? So he packed up his $8,000 and, and left. 
Oh no, <laughs> that's that's probably like a hundred thousand dollars cash nowadays. You know? Nowadays, nowadays. That's why I was asking Mr. K, how was it? how was it playing again playing with Magic? Well, okay, let me ask you this: You played football. Who do you consider one of the all time, all time, all time great football players? <laughs> After you. <laughs> After you. <laughs> After you. Uh, Tom oh. Brady. Okay. So, Tom Brady. How would you have liked to have played with Tom Brady? I mean, you would have, he would have, he would have helped you. Um, the game would have been easier because he would have got the ball to you, got it in, got it to you in situations where you could thrive the best. And, and he's the consummate winner. That's Irvin. Irvin was the consummate winner. I tell people all the time when, when, I was averaging 22 points and 11 rebounds a game as a 19-year-old sophomore. But guess what? We were still a, a run, you know, we we're average basketball team, you know, 500 basketball team. He came and the wins came with him. The winning came with him. And in one year, we're winning a Big Ten championship and we're almost in the Final Four. We lose to Kentucky for the right to go to the Final Four. Yeah. He brought that, you know, his – his his charisma and, and his flash and his 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 knowledge of the game and and his ability to play at such a high level at a very long, young age was exactly what we needed and what we were looking for. And then the next year we won a national championship. So I feel very fortunate that my time at Michigan State coincided with his, and that I was able to take my talents, blend them with his, and we go on to be one of the best teams. In uh, in Michigan State's history and and in NCAA history, one one of the best. You know, I mean, you're very. This is, you're, that, this is why you're a pro because you know you've been asked that question. I'm sure thousands of times about playing with Magic, but you were the older player that was on that team, and I believe mm -hmm. in 1979 you guys faced Larry Bird right against right. Indiana State. Right. Who who had the most assists in that game? <laughs> that I'm gonna do Cedric. I'm gonna do Cedric on this one. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, you, know? you know what happened is that, and I think it shows the versatility of our team. When we came out and we saw that Larry Bird was guarding me, I became the primary ball handler, and with that, the responsibility to dish the basketball. Urban became the score. We just flipped roles. So he had 24 points in the game. He had, uh, I think, five assists. I had 19 points and nine assists. So you know, it was the ability to kind of shift roles on the fly and still be very effective was something that we prided ourselves on. We couldn't believe that Larry was guarding me because, you know, there was always the propensity to maybe get in foul trouble or certainly use up a lot of energy on the defensive end where he needed it on the offensive end. As it turned out, he had one of his worst offensive games of the season. Mm. Thank Trying goodness. to guard you. Thank goodness. <laughs> 79 straight. I was one years old. I, don't know, I was three. Right. Hey, go ahead. hey, 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 guys. Blue. Go ahead. You know, have fun with that. Have fun with that. <laughs> My day is coming. Your time is coming. It's you know, coming you know, fast. Listen, you look good. good. You look good, Greg. You look like very good. Uh -huh, these, baby. Hey. I appreciate that. I tell you, don't get easier as you get older. I, I, I'm telling you, Greg, and I and I know this because I was raised in a household with one brother, one brother, man, mm -hmm. and he he was class of '77 coming out of high school, so he was right in exactly. between you and her. Yeah, he was right with her. Than me. Uh -huh. Yeah, right there. So yeah. I understand. Y'all <laughs> like my brothers, man. You know, same. Age, I I see y'all the same age because that's how I grew up in my own household. I I, I appreciate that. You know, it's funny. I used to really marvel at the. Uh, the older Spartans that would come through when uh, when I was in school. And, you know, I remember Johnny Green seeing his picture on the wall oh, yeah. all over the place. You know, as one of the Spartans first really big uh, basketball stars played 20 years before I did. And I remember when I finally got a chance to meet him, it was in Seattle. I think I was probably in my mid thirties. He was probably in his mid fifties, but I was still in awe of him because he, he, he was such uh, an icon and, and, and uh, just an incredible uh, reputation as a player at Michigan State, representing the school, had a 16, 17 year NBA career, and I know we just lost him uh, late last year at the age of 89. But wow. Johnny Green, uh, you know. So when I when when the young guys 
uh, you know, whatever they, however they choose to acknowledge guys like myself now, I think about what they must feel because I remember what I felt when I met Johnny Green and some of the other all-time greats from yester, from the yester years. Uh, I, I hope that you know we're providing that for the young guys now when they when they see us. Uh, actually, we hope they even know about us because you got to got to pick up a history book as the years continue to get farther and farther away. Yes, That's a fact. I mean, look, look, said. Uh, do you understand this? Like, you just keep it on a level where you can, where we can, like, see where today's player see us. So today's player sees us the same way we saw 1972, 1971 players, right? Mm-hmm. right. That's where we are. You know, that's butterfly. That's that's bell bottom, right? You know, afro, chocolate, <laughs> cyber. That's it. That's what. That's who you are, said. The, the, and the me. Old- the OG cycle. That's the OG. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. it just keeps going. But it's a beautiful thing. I don't think it's it a bad thing. It is a beautiful thing. Yes. And we're here to talk about it. We actually can sit here on the show. But listen, so, so great. You finished. You're the only Spartan basketball player in history to score over 2,000 points and 1,000 rebounds? Yeah. that That's, uh, as a matter of fact, I think that's only been done by maybe four Maybe five Big Ten players ever. ever. Um, I don't. I think Zach Eady. Maybe he's there now. I don't. I'm not sure. But I. Um, he was the other, all, all the others are centers. I was a forward, so I was like the smallest guy to do it. But the first guy to do it. Um, again, I, I got tremendous support, tremendous coaching, and if you're going to have records like that, you better get off to a good start. And I was able to do that because, again, I mentioned Coach Kanakis. Not only did he believe in me, not only did he give me the opportunity at Michigan State. But he also gave me the opportunity to start. I started as a freshman. Uh, you know, I played in 115 games. I started 111 of them. And here's something that will shock you both. My very first start, I came off the bench my first four games. My very first start in my fifth game as a freshman, we were playing Northern Michigan, and they had a point guard on their team named Tom Izzo. What? Come on. I know you gave him 50. <laughs> Terry Furlow no may have given him 50. No, I know you gave him 50. I was, I was defending and rebounding a lot that year, but, uh, you know, you, you just never know. I mean, here, Tom was a great player, by the way. Tremendous. Was he? Player. But you never know how things are going to work out. I mean, here's this guy, and, you know, some 20 years later, he go, you know, he's going to become Michigan State's uh, basketball coach and then uh, eventually a Hall of Famer, now in his 27th, 28th year of coaching. You just never know how this thing, how this circle goes. If I was I, on campus with Tom Lizzo, I'd bully him. i just bully him. Nah, <laughs> <you know, laughs> he hey, he's a pit bull now. He he is. That. I, mean, I, love, I love Coach, man. Yeah, he is or something else, man. Yeah. <laughs> So great. Talking about your transition into broadcasting, right? You went to the NBA. Mm -hmm. You were the fourth pick overall in the NBA draft. Now talk about a little bit of that, your time in the NBA and how that helped you, you know, mature and then get into the role that you are now in as a broadcaster. How did that segue for you? Well, getting to the NBA was a dream come true for me because it's what I had envisioned from a long time back, you know, maybe from the age 10, I always saw myself playing in the NBA I didn't know the path that would, you know, that would that would ensue to get there, but uh, it, it just worked out so beautifully. Uh, playing at Michigan State, becoming an All-America player, winning a championship, uh, showing that I can I can be a pro, and then being drafted in the fourth slot. We were very proud because Urban went number one. Uh, I went number four, and got off to a really really good start with my pro career. And then had an injury in my second year. You know, I talk about, it's funny. Uh, I talk about averaging 22 points a game as in my second year at Michigan State. Well, I was averaging 22 points a game in the NBA through the first 10 or 12 games into my second year. And I felt like nobody could stop me. I felt like I could score on anybody and do just about anything I wanted to do on basketball court. But I, I, I sustained an injury, and that was something that I had never uh, thought about or envisioned. My parents used to always remind me, you know, you get hurt, you better have a second plan. And that's why they always pushed education and, and, and really, really stayed solid with that whole thought. But the, uh, the injury, the knee injury that I had really kind of cut into my effectiveness as a ball player at the level in which I wanted to be and had always been. I'm thankful that I was able to play four more years after that, but I was never a hundred percent again. But while I was hurt, it, it, showed me that basketball is not forever. 
you never know when something's going to happen. The game owes none of us anything. You know, we're fortunate. You guys are fortunate to have had the football careers that you've had. And, uh, uh, and, and, but the game never owes you anything. So I then began thinking about my career after basketball. And I'd already started kind of laying the groundwork for making the transition whenever it might happen. And I wanted to broadcast and I met some great people that served as mentors and uh, and helped me uh, sort of develop a style and a, and a rhythm and a, and a confidence to do this. And so when uh, I walked away from the NBA and I did walk away, I was never cut from a basketball team. When I walked away, I was one year out and then back into the game as a broadcaster. And guys, I'm going to tell you, that was it's my 39th year broadcasting. Wow. 39th. But, Greg, me and you got a lot in common because when I was on the basketball court, I felt like no one can guard me. <laughs> I bet they couldn't. I know they couldn't couldn't catch you on a football field. D. Cleese, <laughs> uh -huh. Robert Smith, none of them can guard You gave them some business? <laughs> Come on, Greg. Hey, you know what's funny? I am well. You know what's funny? Football players have always felt like oh, they can play man. basketball. Isn't that, isn't that a trip? Oh, it is a trip. Wow. Office linemen don't think that, but they yeah. all the rest of we, it. Yeah, the, the rest football of it. players that had a basketball team in the IM, we scored the most points ever. <laughs> That's funny because <laughs> it's all physical over there. They ain't called oh, no I, foul, I, man. I, ain't I, no I, foul. I, I, and guess I who was, was the point careful. guard running the show? I was very careful. You know, the thing that was funny is that you guys, as football players, were allowed to play intramural basketball. That's crazy. We no, no. were not allowed to play. I was playing I am football uh my sophomore year when and Judd found out about it. He came <laughs> over and put the put it into that. They were not let us play in real football. Oh, no way. Ain't no way, man. You know, it's look, we got a couple clips from the national championship game we want to pull up right now and get your views on that and your thoughts. Do we have that, guys? Let's see. Three, two, two, one. Nineteen eighty nine. Woo! Nineteen eighty nine. Oh yeah, I remember. See, there's one of those assists right there, it's Ron Charles. That started the game. Hmm. That's a little baby hook. Okay. You that, was, that was Irvin with the baby hook and Bird with the rebound. I'm coming from behind. Going to steal it right there. Try to steal it anyway. You know what was really cool about this game here? There's Bird. Go mm. right by him. Another assist. See, look at that. Right, Bo. Push you too. Drop it off. Another one over to Terry Donnelly. Slow feet. Can't eat. <laughs> you better have some lateral quickness. <laughs> right. I know you saw that. Yeah, I think I'm going to score run. this one. I'm going to score this one myself. Oh, yeah. Easy. With the left hand underneath. Yeah, Bird, you don't talk about this, Bird. <laughs> you know what was beautiful about this game? This was in Salt Lake City, but my mother was there. My dad was there. My brother, my younger brother was there. And my girlfriend was there. My girlfriend is my wife today. So you're talking about the sister. So, so hold on. On that. On that. You the, you the, I think, I don't know how many uh, Spartan legends married a cheerleader. You know, I, and uh, Miss Donna. Yeah, right. yeah. Donna, oh, Donna, Donna, where, where's the three-point line? <laughs> hey, that, that's Donna right there. Did you see that girl? What? Did you see that, did you see that girl a moment ago? Cheering? Can we rewind. Rewind. Can we rewind? Rewind. 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 Right, right there. there. That's Donna. Oh, okay. That's my wife. She's like, that's my boo. <laughs> you need to tell me it was no three point line in '79. A three point line. If it had been a three point line, we'd have won that game by 25 points. We had Mike Berkovich and, and, and Terry Donnelly. They could have killed from the three point line. Ooh, that looked like me back in '89. <laughs> On eight foot. <laughs> the timing was beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. That, that's, that's awesome to go back in. So that was Salt Lake City. You Salt yeah. Lake City. Oh man, what is it? What kind of thoughts did that bring up? In memories when you see those clips. I mean, obviously you you could still visualize exactly what's about to happen as you watch that from yeah. YouTube. I remember being really nervous the day of the game, wanting to go, ready to go, ready to go, but having to wait because it was a night game 
in Salt Lake City. Uh, we knew we were playing at a high clip. Indiana State was undefeated and lost the game. And, you know, they had the player of the year in Larry Bird. We just wanted a piece of them. We knew that if we played our potential coming out of the Big Ten, mm -hmm. we would, wow. if we played the way we were capable of playing, undefeated or not, we should win the basketball game. That was what was on our minds. And when I look back on it, you know, a lot of times you may have a really good team. You may have the best team. Doesn't always mean you're going to win. So I am just thrilled that we were able to win that night. Uh, I remember Al McGuire, the announcer and the great former coach, told us, guys, you'll never realize what this moment will mean until years down the road. And he is absolutely right because it has not lost one ounce of significance in, in our minds. And uh, it, it has it, 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 can, it will always stand as a, a point of reference when you think about some of the good things that have happened, what the game has allowed, and the people you've met. Those guys that I played with, those are my brothers forever. Oh, oh, hold on. Hey, Larry, <laughs> you can't call me back. You didn't, you, you didn't tell me you could stay gray back in 79, bro. <laughs> you can't call me back, man. Yeah, this worked. <laughs> Larry became friends with Urban. They couldn't stand each other for a long time and then into that Boston Celtic Los Angeles Lake, Lake rivalry. But then they eventually became good friends. Larry still doesn't like me. Oh, he's still doesn't? No. no, but every time me no. and Larry have breakfast, he never bring that up. But this time, we'll bring it up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, my goodness. How often do you get a chance to see Larry? I mean, you're on the road all the time. I'm sure you probably cross paths. I used to see him a lot because for a long time, he was a coach with the Pacers. He was a, 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 uh, a general manager, president of basketball operations with the Pacers. So yeah. I would see him a lot. And you know the pleasantries were were cordial. Hi, how you doing? But that was pretty much it. <laughs> was, you know, we didn't. How's, how's the family? You know, none of that. None, none of, of that. that. Yeah. He's better than me. I would walk past and say, "Yeah, let seventy nine, seventy nine. <laughs> <laughs> the hit from French Lick. I mean, he, hey. he still says that's one of his biggest disappointments, and I get it. I get it because you guys can probably attest to this. Yeah, the victories. They're supposed to happen, right. but it's those setbacks and those losses that haunt you forever. You know, you guys had tremendous success as football players in your careers, but I'm sure you've got some losses that still sting to this day. Oh, there's no question about it. Hey, so Greg, before we get you out of here, man, how do you what what do Michigan State? What do we have to do tomorrow to upset the seven four big center in the middle? What what do we got? I, I feel it though. Well, here's what they have to do. They've got to get some production from their front line. They have not been getting production. It's been all guard uh, uh, offense, oriented offense for them. They've got to get something from their front line guys in this game. And they've got to be able to rebound the basketball. Uh, I thought they played Purdue really well, what, two weeks ago? Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. yeah. It's hard to win in Mackey Arena, guys. It's and they, they were in position to pull it off. But they got to be able to sustain that effort over the whole 40 minutes. And, and, and they cannot turn the ball over. And they, I, they've got to get I'm, – I'm saying they've got to get at least 20 points off that front line. And they haven't been getting even half that much in the last four or five games. Mm, that's, and they that's got to D up. You know, that's a good team. Uh, you know, you double down on Edie, but then you got to be able to recover and get out on that perimeter because he's not a selfish guy. He will kick it back out. You know, hopefully the, the, the fans are kind of on our side when you look at, you know, Wisconsin going to be playing right after us. They probably want to face Michigan State rather than produce oh, yeah. our – sure they know they do. And it's I'll not say this. Arena tomorrow, right? I'll say this, and I'll echo what Cedric said earlier. You know, Izzo uh, has a way of, of getting his guys ready. And if they don't win tomorrow, I'm still going to be excited for them in the tournament because they will be out of the Big Ten. And your conference – Opponents, they know you like every, you know, they know you better than you know yourself in many cases. So mm -hmm. now you're going against teams that are less familiar. And that's when, that's why they have so much success because when they get to that tournament, uh, it's, it's new life and it's unfamiliar opponents. And that's when they can really, really thrive. So I'm looking forward to that. I, I hope it'll happen again this year. 
looking forward to it. And, you know, before we let you go, I do want to talk about a little bit of sadness with Earl Curitan. You know, this is one of your counterparts yeah. over at the Detroit Pistons who recently passed. But, you know, I, there was an interview that's online of you with him talking about St. Cecilia and the gym mm -hmm. there. Um, yeah. Do we have that video ready? Just want to see a little bit of it. I was a, a tag along a lot of times with Earl and my uncle John because they were buddies. So whenever they got to an open gym situation, I was always one of the guys that they would invite. So I was able to, as, as, as Derek said, to sharpen my irons against those guys. But when you got here, you never knew who you were going to run into. You know, people were just, oh, that's so-and-so, and that's that guy, that's that guy, that, that, this guy just left. This just, it's just one floor here. You think about how many basketball floors, when you go to play in a tournament, there's six or seven floors and four or five different games going on. One game, yes. and it started from the morning all the way to the to night, right. and there was one game on this floor, and everybody's sitting around waiting. So you got a chance if you got here early enough to see a lot of talent, a lot of you know guys that would be celebrities, if you will. Mm -hmm. We had this conversation about comparing the Saint Cecilia to the Rucker in New York. Well, my take was in, at the Rucker, Dr. J, and all of those guys played, but they played when they were pros. Yeah. When you came through the Saint. You were in high school and you grew up here and then you ascended to the pro. So you came through this almost as a program. Yeah. You know, like that, I know that's a long video. I don't want to get too long, mm -hmm. but you were there. I saw Derek. Uh, it was, who was that? Yeah. Derek Coleman. Uh, yeah. Earl, Earl, from the left to the right, it was Earl Curitan, the great Dave Bing, uh, <laughs> myself, uh, Derek Coleman, and Grant Long. Grant Long was the one that was talking in that piece. But Earl was a tremendous guy, and, oh, and I'm still God. stinging from his sudden passing. Uh, Earl and I, we yeah. met when we were 15 years old, trying out for the Detroit youth team that would travel from Detroit to Birmingham to play in the national youth games, and uh, we never lost touch. When we met, we were 15, and we were probably both just over six feet tall, maybe 6'2 or something like that. Earl grew to be 6'9", I grew to be 6'8". He played in, at, you know, at the University of Detroit. I played at Michigan State. He played 12 years in the NBA. He won two championships. Just a tremendous wow. guy. And we had just talked. We, had, we were together two days before he passed. I mean, I, Earl, Earl and I talked all the time. And he works my camps. I mean, yeah. He stayed at my camp for years. So he was my guy. So, yeah, you can imagine how hard it is. And not just for me, but anybody who knew him, he was a great guy. Oh. Unbelievable guy, great character guy. I mean, I used to see him all the time. I mean, we used to at the golf outings, as you know, mm -hmm. with George, and uh, just it was just around town because living in yeah. Ohio, you see him. He's around Farmington, and we were always in the car wash, the gas station, the restaurant. We would see him, and I, yeah. I, it's unbelievable that that Earl is gone. I, what, 60, 65? He was 66 years old. He's two. He's two weeks older than I am. I I have two weeks to kid him when he would turn have his birthday, and now I'm younger for two weeks. Yeah, and he's like, oh, shut up! You're gonna be here another you know, 14 days, 13, 12, whatever it is. <laughs> but, hey, got uh, Jason. I know you have a great time working with George. I want to mention George because we have that in common. Uh, George, George has played a big role in my life as a broadcaster as well. Uh, I met George when I was 18 years old at Michigan State. He and Gus Kanakis were very good friends. Mm. So I met jo uh, George when I was 18. Never. Uh, envisioning that I would be working with him in this capacity now, but by virtue of my playing with the Pistons, George called my early professional games, and now he and I have been working together for just a long, long time, and he amazes me with his energy, especially when basketball and football are both happening, how he can, uh, you know, jet from one place to the other and make all his games, and, and, and when he sits down, he does it with great passion and energy, uh, like it was his uh, first few years in, in, in the business. Uh, Greg, please tell Blau, man, the old swerve say what's going on. That was I will tell him that tomorrow. <laughs> I will tell him tomorrow, Said That's my <laughs> main man right there. Uh -huh. Absolutely, man. No, we really appreciate the time. That's been great, and we love you uh, for coming I on. I thought I was going to get some piano. <laughs> you know, the last five minutes, Jim. Yeah, when I do it, I'm recording and send it to your phone. Do that. <laughs> do that. At least the keys ain't got nothing on me, brother. <laughs> Special K, Greg Kelser, man. I appreciate the time, brother. And we will see you soon. Don't be all right. Great hanging out with you two great sparks. Absolutely. All right. Oh man, unbelievable. Said, look, 
look, that's 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 like royalty right there. I love having royalty on there, man. You you royalty, you know, that's royalty. Okay. You know, yeah, I'm just I, I, I want to say it then, straight, but I'm a little bit more royalty than Special K. Right? Oh, come on now, come on now, come on! There you go, there you go with that. That that's bull. Yeah, them, 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 OG, them, like you say, them my OGs, man. Yeah, you know, sure. no, 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 respect and love for those guys, man. man. Nothing but nothing but at all, man. You know, right now, you look. We got we got we got a we got a transition, right? We got a lot. We got a jam packed show. I told you guys it was going to be a jam packed show, and you know, there's a lot of things we got to cover. But right now, we got to take a break because we got to hear from our friends over at IHOP. <laughs> IHOP has tons of omelets, so you can have omelets for breakfast, brunch, brinner, or even a brittle of the night snack. Try the new meaty, cheesy, and crispy mega omelet and add cinnamon dippers for a dollar, only at IHOP. Said, I hope you got your sip of your red cup, man, because we got to go right into another interview, man. We got a young man here, a young Spartan dog. You want the OGs? Now we're going to the young dogs, you know what I mean, that's trying to get into that next phase of life, especially when you talk about the NFL, we're going to bring on a Spartan dog, a young one, a great one, none other than West Bloomfield's finest. Trey Mosley joins us as Sparta MSU. Trey, what's up with you, dog? What's up, what's up? How y'all doing? Excellent. What's going on? Can't complain, can't complain at all, man. Good to West be on Bloomfield. here. Bloomfield, I stayed off Maple and Drake when we was playing it when I was with the Lions, baby. Okay, okay, yeah, that's not too far. Hey. Yeah. yeah, he was an Alden Brook. I remember that Alden Brook. Yeah. He used to go down. Oh yeah, I've driven, I've driven past Alden Brook a few times. No, Trey, not me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know what? That was my I don't even know. I that was my bad, Trey. But when I say red cups, and it, it went down. I already know y'all are taking care of business. Ooh, I already know. Whoa. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> man, don't look. Hey, man, Trey. I just want to catch up with you, man, and see what's going on with you because, look, you have now gone from being a, a college player, right? You declared for the NFL draft. Talk about that process with you now leaving Michigan State and then transitioning, training and getting yourself ready for the MSU Pro Day, which was just yesterday. Yeah, so the, um, the transition has been smooth so far, you know, going from being a college athlete to now, uh, focusing on strictly on football and my body, you know, in, in school, you got to make sure you're being a good student athlete. Uh, you're ripping and running from class to practice to tutors, you know how everything go. Now it's just training, 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 training. So it's like I'm getting everything I'm putting into it at this point, and there's no distractions in terms of school or anything outside of, you know, what I want to do with my future. So, you know, I'm definitely excited to see what the future holds for me. Mm. That's why you remember them days? First of all, I'm glad Trey did go to class. You know, that's 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 a that's a plus, you know. <laughs> but take me through, take me through, like, you know, you, you play little league football, you, you go to high school, you know, you, you do your thing at college. Now I got this opportunity to fulfill that dream and I'm and I'm right there. Like what how, how's the inside, the emotion, what's going through your head? How you feel about it? Yeah, so growing up, you know, with Little League, I played for the Pontiac Panthers. As a kid, it's just you and you happy to be out there with your, with your friends. You know, you're making new teammates every year. And it's just playing ball. You're not really thinking about – you're not even thinking about high school ball yet. You just, you know, go out there having fun with your boys, just going out there competing. And then as you get older, you start to see and realize what football can do for you and how many – the doors it can open, the opportunity it can bring to you. So as I got into high school, started taking this a lot serious, a lot more serious, you know, in terms of training. Um, just perfecting my craft as best as I could so that I was able to get the opportunities to play college football like I did coming to Michigan State. And then from there, just going year by year and trying to improve my game so that, you know, when the time came for me to declare for the NFL, I was, um, you know, gave myself the best chance. Trey, you know, we got to talk about the elephant in the room. Now, now you went to West Bloomfield High School and y'all yeah. the Lakers, right? Y'all yeah, had a great – Team color scheme, I think, over there. It was green and white. Green and white, yep. Right. There were several people from your team, your coach included, that went to the other side. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ron Bellamy, you know, I mean, I don't, and listen, man, you know, and uh, what's uh, 
uh, the other, the running back, number seven over at yeah. over there. Yeah, yeah. You know, Donovan. <laughs> I don't know, but listen, we got guys like you know Darren, you know you know Tatum, and you have, mm-hmm. you have several players from from there who've gone to Michigan State. Talk about how that program. I mean, it's a story. Look, you got a lot of dogs coming out of West Bloomfield High School. You know, oh, yeah. from a national perspective, people look at West Bloomfield High School as one of those teams. How did that team? How did that school prepare you for the next level? It was great. You know, it actually started in middle school. Um, Coach mm-hmm. Bellamy was our middle school basketball coach, so. He kind of got an eye on us early, you know, keep us in the program and I'll see us go to other schools around the state. So Michigan so, been uh, team for a while, then. They been <laughs> team for a while. <laughs> yeah, that ain't legal, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're doing our thing. You know, we got to high school. It was competitive every day, every year, you know, with so much talent. Uh, from freshman to my senior year, it was, it was seeing guys all over the field dominate and going to the next level. So when you're surrounded with that, you know, it's either if you want to be a part of it or you're going to get left behind. So practice is always, you know, very competitive, which, you know, allowed us to become so so good ourselves. And then, you know, working our way up the ranks in terms of getting recruited and getting recognized nationally was great. You know, had some guys come to Michigan State, uh, had some go to the other school down the road. And then we had a numerous amount of guys go to other schools around the country as well. So, you know, we're still all in touch. You know, our root for those guys, always want to see them do well, you know, because we are family and friends first. But, you know, I'm never going to, you know, cheer for that other school. But I do want them to, you know, be successful in their careers, you know, especially for the building. If I had friends that went to Michigan, they ain't my friends no more. They ain't your friends no more? I no, feel I, 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 I dislike them. We're putting you it know, up there right now. Look at that. You, you remind me, that's how, you sound like Coach Hall. That's how he be. Like, this new yeah, age of football, not social media. No, no social media don't, ruined don't call us. me, don't talk to me, <laughs> don't come to my mama house, none of that. We don't like you no more. I feel you. I feel you 100%. I do. Trey, I do. listen, I want to know what was your 40 time because now it's more and more, it's more four fours and four threes mm-hmm. than I ever seen in my life. Like, is yeah. this a new generation? Are y'all just that fast or – is it is it really forty yards or is thirty eight? Like <laughs> you got I'm, I'm doing you got yeah. like, that's, on, the, that's the that's the that's the crazy thing. You got like I said before, it used to be like skilled players. You would expect them to run fast. Now you got the big guys running fast. It's like wow, how it's crazy to see how much you know athletes have changed over the years. And I'm excited to see where it's going to be in the next few years. So. Um, yesterday, pro day went well for myself and the rest of my teammates. You know, we all came out there and showcased. You could tell everyone had great months of training to prepare for pro day and everything. And I was very satisfied with my times. The only thing about pro day that's kind of like, I wouldn't say iffy, it's just like we got all the different scouts there and they all, you know, work their own stopwatches and everything. So it's like one can get you clocked in at a four four five, one can get you clocked in at a, a four six one, and it's like which one of y'all are more accurate? It, I mean, it's, you know, everybody got different vantage points too. So it's, it can be a little, you know, up in the air. But I mean, the time I, the time I reported to me, I'm okay with it. But I, I don't know if that was, you know, the, the best time for myself. But I can't really argue with that because, you know, I'm not the one making the decision with the, everything and how that stuff works. But like I said, I, I'm very satisfied with my uh, self uh, testing yesterday. But I mean, 40, I think the 40 is more of like a, it's the icing on the cake, you know, it's just to showcase what you can do because there's a lot of guys who run some great 40 times and then they get on that field and it's like, oh, where that, where that time go? Right. right. So can you can you really ball or just can you go out there and, and run 40? So, but it, it, it's a little bit of everything too. Hey, Trevor just put, you know, say it ran 458. Trevor, you better know it. You know, <laughs> got, got some, got some wheels. <laughs> oh, no. That's what people. That's what people don't understand. Four five, like the four five is still fast. You just got so many people running four 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 threes four twos. Now that it's like, dang, four five, not even fast no more. I mean, come on. That's right. They used to call me slow, but I, I just got the most touchdowns. And I mean, I just, did, you know what? It's not yeah, about you, me. I'm yeah, only one of the best <laughs> history top twenty five players ever. You know, like, you know what? Another segment, Trey. <laughs> no, no, hey, Trey, look. So you had – we're going to name a couple of guys that were there, right? You had Aaron, Aaron Brule, obviously yep. J.D. Duplain, Franklin, the tight end, Jalen, Harold Joyner, Chester mm-hmm. Kempro, Nick Samak, Jalen Sami, yep. Sammy Sami, and then Jacoby Winman and Brandon Wright and yourself. Now, mm-hmm. you know, you guys, you know, have, have been through a lot together. Some of you guys started off as Spartans. Some came in and transferred in. Um, when I look at – you know, Aaron Brule and, you know, uh, Sami and Winman, those guys stick out in the hair, they join her as well. They're all mm-hmm. transfers. 
Now, what is it like? Because this is a different world than we're all accustomed to. There's been more change in college football in the last four years than we've seen in the 30 years previous to that. Mm -hmm. How do you guys kind of cohabitate and and gel together? Is it something that you guys are like, hey, this is a, you guys talk a lot, or is it more everybody's a free agent? How does it work? Right. Yeah, this, so there's there's two sides to that. You know, it can be a little challenging uh, when you get a new roster every year because that's like you said, that's how college athlete, athletics are nowadays. You know, with guys transfer in and out, and yeah. also along with the new freshman classes coming in. But like the fact that social media being so huge the way it is now, a lot of guys already know each other from just coming up in high school, competing at camps, mm. or just taking visits across the country together. So sometimes guys might transfer in, but you might have known them from a visit you guys had, or you might be in touch with them on social media. So it's kind of, you know, helped ease it. And then when people get on campus, um, you know, my time here, we did a great job of making sure everyone felt a part of the team. So we were doing outings and stuff like that, doing kickball tournaments, uh, dodgeball, going out to eat, bowling you know, some stuff off the field, just to, you know, keep the team chemistry and everything together. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, you, you look at mm -hmm. you know, people bringing up Lombardi, you know, yeah. <laughs> Rocky Lombardi was in the mix. But is that who was throwing you the balls? I've seen, you know, video of you out there catching yeah. balls. Was that, is that yeah. who was throwing to you? It sure was. You know, I actually had reached out to Rocky a, a few months ago because, you know, we had we lost a few of our quarterbacks last year to the transfer portal. So it was a question of who was going to, you know, participate for us, for us for pro day and, you know, throw the ball around. And, uh, you know, luckily, Rocky he had his pro day last week. So it kind of timed up perfect for him to take care of his business at NIU and then being able to make the, uh, the drive up to Michigan, Michigan State's campus, you know, get some work in with us. And we were actually getting some work in with each other down in Florida. We both trained down in Florida for uh, pro day. So, you know, just keeping that chemistry alive was – and it worked out perfect for everybody. Trey, I'm going to ask you a question because, you know, I'm, I'm different. I'm a little different than Stray. Like, Stray got home training. He, you know, <laughs> he's more mature than I am. I, I got to ask this question. Take, I'm in the locker room now. We, I want the political, you know. I got you. The situation happened with Coach Tuck, right? Mm -hmm. I'm in the locker room. Yeah. You being a leader, senior, you know, big dog. Take me through that. Like, you know, take me through. When it hit, how did it feel? What was the conversation mm -hmm. like? How we brought together? You know, what was the jokes? What, what, anything? I want. I'm in the locker room though. Don't get right, me. Right. You, know, you talk with. I see you went to communication. <laughs> on 225. I see you went. You know, I want right. the locker room talk. Right, right. Okay. So yeah, when we first, so it was crazy how it all played out because we had a game that uh following the, the prior day before the news came out and everything. So the last time we heard from him, he was giving us a speech because that's right after the Richmond game. We won the game, but it got a little sloppy at the end of the game. So we got into the locker room, you know, because Tucker cussed us out, ripped it to everybody. Like, we got too too casual towards the end of the game and gave up some points that we shouldn't allow because, like, we're playing against the level of competition we were playing against. We supposed to handle business because we had Washington that following week. So, so yeah, it was crazy. From going from there and then that next morning, you know, you wake up, you see a news, breaking news everywhere. It was definitely like a damn and a shock because it just came out of nowhere. And it's early in the season, so – all of our teammates, you know, we texting their group chat, like, is it real? Is it fake? What's going to happen? You know, some of us thinking it's a joke. We, like, trying to brush it off, like, no, nah, everything will be cool. And then when we get a meeting call, you know, um, the rest of the staff and uh, AD Halley, they call a meeting to so just get everybody on the same page and everything. So once the meeting got called, we was like, okay, maybe this is something serious. So, you know, we come into the team room uh, that, that uh, afternoon and just sit down, everybody waiting around. You know when it's like, when you know bad news is coming, but you don't know exactly what it is. So everybody just waiting around and like looking around, asking questions, looking nervous or whatnot. Coach uh, AD Halleck come in, you know, he breaks the news to us. You see a lot of like long faces in the room because everybody like, what's next? How does this gonna affect us in our season? Is it going, what, what are we gonna do? We don't got no coach right now, no head coach. So it was definitely like a still like a damn moment, like what are we gonna do? But. You know, even the way the season played out in terms of wins and losses not falling the way we wanted to, the way that we came together and supported each other on and off the field was something that I'll never forget because, you know, myself along with other older guys and captains of the team, we never gave up. We never quit. We quit on, our, on each other because we were like, this is our last go round. We got we to gotta go out there and do everything we can just to, you know, make sure we still doing our best for Spartan Nation because, you know, nobody outside of Spartan Nation really care about how, we feel and how we're we going through with the coaching change because you know 
that's just how it goes. Nobody give, give a damn of what's going on in East Lansing. That's just how it's been, and that's probably how it's going to always be. But we had to take care of each other. And I think we did a great job of doing that. But like I said, I wish it could have translated to more wins on the field because Coach Barnett did a, a hell of a job stepping into that role and leading us week in and week out, you know, with all the distractions and all the outside noise. I'm very appreciative of him and everyone else, you know, who helped keep everything together throughout that time. Oh, okay. Hey, 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 man, how, how beautiful is that? Because let me tell you something, Trey. You know, what you just went through over the last, you know, six or 12 months, you know, it's something that, you, you you obviously will never forget it, but it's preparing right. you for life. You know what I mean? Like you, this is—I know Cedric can tell you this. You're gonna get some curveballs thrown at you. That for sure. You know, and, and, and because of that, that you just went through, them curveballs ain't gonna be shit. I'm gonna tell you that. Like, and people mm -hmm. gonna wonder like, why and how are you getting through this? And how is your mindset the way it is? Is because of going through things like that that seem like, why me? What is this about? Like, right. How, you know, right now, but perseverance, man, and that's the biggest thing, is getting up in the morning and, and taking that next step and continue to push through because you're a talented young man. Everybody can see that. And I think that, that, yeah, for sure. It's, 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 it's you. We appreciate you, okay? <laughs> and this ain't us, you know what I mean? So just to, to just continue to stay in that fight, and who knows what will happen. You just heard a legend that was on a minute ago in Special mm -hmm. K talk about Man, you just don't know how the thing shakes out, right? He talked about playing against little, little, short, little guy from up in northern Michigan, and right. it turns out to be Tom Enzo, who's the coach of Michigan State. You know, <laughs> 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 right? You just don't know how things turn out. And right. You're one of those guys, I think, that's going to be that's tailor made for for figuring things out as you continue to persevere, man. Like so, so when you talk about your career and, and like your performance there. I think we have a little, a little highlights. Is that what we have of Trey Mosley at Michigan State? Let's we'll see if we can have some of this video here. Yes, indeed. And lean on that potent rushing attack. Quickly to the outside. Oh, man. See, I was going to the score right there. I Trey the score on this play. Mosley's going to turn it on. Here's his first throw of this game to the end zone. It worked. Trey Mosley. Hauser. Pointing at the cheerleader. Throws they have it. The <laughs> That's caught. Touchdown, Michigan State. That's three quarterback. Spartans working from behind here. They do complete it mostly again. You know, it's crazy on that play where I got horse collar uh, versus Miami. Yeah, I know. I got to take that to the crib. I got to. But the yeah, dude yeah. tackled me. If, if I was, was on good. your team, soon you got to the sideline, I'd have been giving it to oh, me. Man. Oh, man. You got ran down. <laughs> yeah, I know. Trey, you know what? Know. Since we all spawned out, let's start this because you're going to make some money. You're talented. When you first get your paycheck, we're going to record because you know everything's social media. We're going to start this up with a spawned out. You got to take me out to eat. <laughs> you know, like, we're gonna start this. Trey and Swerve. We're gonna start this. All right, good. Hey, I'm just gonna leave me out. Yeah, this ain't about you right now, Trey. I just told you. Trey, Trey, Trey get his paycheck and he take me out. And I'm cheating oh, on the state and hey, I'm gonna all the things at home mall. <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't too bad on your pockets, though, Trey. Yeah, it ain't too, that ain't too bad. You got yeah. ran down by the, by the Miami. Hurricane, yeah, yeah, so the crazy Let's thing is, the guy, the, the guy who tackled me, I we actually uh trained together. There's obviously, I mean, this uh pro, you know, getting ready for the NFL together. So we were talking oh, about the play. Oh. oh man, I'm like, dog, you can course calling me everything. We got the flag, we got like an extra another 15, 20 yards, but the touchdown would definitely been better because that would have been like a 99 yard touchdown, too. Yeah, a, a yard line. you know, right. you know what happened when you got back to campus. <sighs> Oh, no, no. <laughs> hey, yeah, we'll me. talk about that later. Trust me, I know. <laughs> oh man, what, is, what, what does that mean? <laughs> hey, you, you're 99 yards, right? 
99. Uh, 99 that's when I was like to get back. That would have been a record. Hold that on, record. On. I think I it was like yards. 92. Nigeria Carter. But when yeah. you do 99 yards, you get you you're gonna be on every sports channel. You're gonna mm-hmm. be in ESPN. You're gonna be on the top ten plays, right? So what mm-hmm. you think gonna happen on campus? <laughs> <laughs> don't, shut, don't shut it down. Don't shut it down. Right. Shut it. Right, we'll talk later, Trey. I want some of those stories. I, I can share some stories. Oh, so, yeah. I already, oh, yeah. I already know you was getting down back in the day. I already know. Oh, my goodness. I already know. Swerve. Swerve. Oh, my goodness. Party, Look at it. Party, <laughs> party, party animal right there for sure. You better know it. Hey, you know what? what? It was it was sweat. It was Swerve said and Mateen. And oh, yeah. Plexi. That's my partner crying. That's oh, yeah. my partner yeah. I already, I, already, I already can see it. I can already see it. I already know the vibes. He gonna take it to the casket, and I'm gonna take it to the scat. I'm not. <laughs> oh yeah, Spartan dog right there. I, see I know the one. Spartan dog right there. Yeah. Trey, Tra- yeah. we talking about today's NFL, man. Everything that you went through, you know, in preparation. When you see Spartan dogs like Kirk Cousins, you know, let's pull mm-hmm. up a little edit on Get into Kirk. that bag. Get into that bag. Yeah. <laughs> See that? Do you see that? Career you got the agent. Let me just you get some the of that. Agent, brother. Let me, Ooh, let, me, let me get some of that. Let me get some of that. I mean, man, like 1%. What's that? What, what's 1% of that? A, a lot. <laughs> a lot. 1% is a lot. <laughs> $411 million, mm-hmm. man. That's, I mean, that's great to see. That's great to see, especially for him coming off the injury, you know, getting to Atlanta with it, where his, uh, I heard his wife is from there, too. So that's. That's good for him. Yeah, you, you didn't see they smile. Even the kids oh. that a smile like this. Oh yeah, you see they that? Got the they got another one. Uh huh. They had the chains on and everything. <laughs> they living. They living it up. They living it up down in the A. They loving it, mm-hmm. man. Trey, so before we let you go, I want to ask you about Spartan basketball, man. You know, okay. we, we absolutely want you know talk about your football career, but what you think about the dogs tomorrow? What's their chances mm-hmm. tomorrow against? Purdue and Edie in the Petri dish. From the I love it. You know, I love it. Like you said, tournament time is when Michigan State basketball flourishes. You know, Big Ten tournament, uh, March Madness tournament. I got faith in our guys every time. You know, I got great relationships with guys on the team, you know, with us coming up at the same time. But I know they're going to go out there tomorrow and handle business. I ain't worried about that. Okay. Not worried about that. Bro. Hey, Trey, were you like me? Like when you went to study hall and they had basketball games, did you sneak out or you was like straight uh, did what you had to do? You. See, 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 nowadays we got the, we got it on our phone. I can pull it up on my phone. I can be watching the game and taking care of work at the same time. Oh, yeah, see, we didn't have that. That's where we didn't have that. Well, right. guess what I had to do? You know, my best friend, Mateen, he playing at, at oh, yeah. 7.30. We got study hall at 7, and she won't let us leave. So, you know, Bathroom. you know what? I got to run 6 o'clock in the morning. I'll do that. For yeah, you. I'll take it. You're right. I got to go see the game, though. I'll take the punishment to come with it. <laughs> I got to go run at 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> right. Hey, they still the world. They sat there. They did what they supposed to do. Nah, no, 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 no. We, we did both. We did both. We did both. We did both. <laughs> they had the business on and off the school. <laughs> we was late to the game. We made it, though. We you made know, it, yeah. We did make it. Hey, Trey, sure. man, look, I mean, best of luck to you. Going forward, man, we just wanted to bring you on and like kind of highlight you. We really celebrate you and what you've been able to accomplish at Michigan State. And bro, we cheered for you in this NFL draft. Get on that right. All, all we need is a shot, baby. That's all we need. Yeah, that's right all we need. That's all we that's need. It. I, I want him to get a shot so he can take me to dinner. If not, <laughs> if I see is a misunderstanding. Oh man, I got, I got you. We're gonna take care of that. We're gonna take care of that. For sure. Now, best of luck, brother. Proud of you, man. Absolutely. Appreciate that for sure. And we're going to be in touch, fellas. We're going to be in Absolutely. touch for sure. All right. Trey Appreciate Mo. y'all having me on. Absolutely. Thank My you for being on, brother. Yep, yep, for sure. Yep. Good luck to you. Hey, listen, Trey Mosley, Michigan State football, Swerve. Look, look that's 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 three. We had what, one, two, three, four, four legends. We had two legends on the show today. How about that, man? No, no, no. No, no. <laughs> 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 hey, who, 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 I was talking about the guests, man. We, we, you, listen, we can't. Name the two. <laughs> uh, we had Greg Kelsey and that's, Trey, that's Mo- Trey Moses. That's oh, no, nah, we got, we got, we had three. Man, you, oh, hey, listen, man, come on, man. You can't count yourself no more, right? 
Listen, I, 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 how y'all think Swerve is doing? Y'all like Swerve. Swerve's a mainstay. I don't, Swerve ain't, he, he not a guest. But Swerve listen, Swerve, I need all the act. I need it because I don't hear the, I don't hear the cheers no more. They, they, you they know, that's why I lock myself in the room sometimes and I just, you know, I had a moment because I miss it. No, 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 no. They cheering for you. They are. They here cheering for you. You on here. And, and listen, they love the fact that you got that baby grand piano behind you like that, and everybody oh, is yeah. you know, I'm, you know, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Swerve is C Spot MD. I need it. I need to read that. I'm telling you, it's mental. It yeah. is. I need it. it. Give it to him, fellas. We had three, we had three legends on today. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> Swerve needs to get on the piano. We still chant for you, play all that stuff. Look at that. Stray. Look, Trev, Trev is my guy, man. Trev talked about you running the four five eight a minute ago. Y'all call him Trev. I call him TT. <laughs> T double, and I ain't talking about T double. T -double. T -double. T -double. T -double. Yeah, TT. -T. That's my man. That's my man. But see, I'm gonna yeah. play the piano. You know what? I, I need a certain amount of numbers. We got to get our numbers up, right? Once we get a certain amount of numbers of followers and people liking and subscribing. I'm going to play the piano. Y'all going to say, you know what? Alicia Keys ain't got shit on Swerve. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Y'all hear it right there. You know, he going to do it. Once we get over that, we got to get to 5,000. We, we, oh, yeah. We got, we got, we we got it. And, and you know how we can get to 5,000 straight? And it was in a song. Oh. Tell, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. All it is is pressing a button. That's it. That's it. Don't call the stadium holds 70,000. <laughs> Come on, Spartans. We got to do better. Come on. <laughs> 5,000? 5,000, man. Come on, man. That ain't I'm, nothing. I'm going to Twitter soon we get off the show. All right. Let's do it. Listen, everybody, look, it was a great show. Have Special K on here. And, and special thanks to Trey Mosley for joining us. Look, Swerve, I mean, we done for the, the week yet. For the week. We coming back next week on Tuesday. We'll see everybody. So for Cedric Swerve and Irvin, I'm Jason Strayhorn. This is Sparta MSU. Everybody, y'all have a good night. God bless you. Mm, mm, mm. And go green. <laughs>